Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. Uh, before we start, let's have a look at the voucher code screen. Uh, also, if you could let me know if audio and video, audio and visual is okay. Uh, so the voucher code screen, if you use King's Crusher, you'll get 15% off. So you can challenge me or other very, very strong players around, including the world champion Magnus Carlsen, who's been playing some brilliant chess recently. You can challenge even him. You just turn up, uh, well, I'll turn up early for him. <laughs> Usually I would say 15 minutes, but maybe half an hour before, try and send the challenge off. And it goes into our list of challenges. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to go into the uh, challenges page now. Uh, I'm, I was messing around with audio earlier. I hope audio and visual is okay. Please let me know. Um, and we're going to take the first challenge. Ah, oh, if it's not an increment, I'd rather not play hmm, three minutes with a two second increment. I, I can't really accept increments, I'm afraid. Uh, could you avoid increments because of the Q nature? Uh, if you could resend that challenge, uh, no increments, please. Uh, so either three minutes or five minutes without any increments. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Olaf. Okay, is uh, Olaf around? I thought I saw him earlier. Uh, okay, okay, there he is. We get a king's engine. Can I play e5 immediately here? I haven't committed to knight f6. Knight d4 is is making it different, but I I can just uh, have the perk of. Um, a quick f5 in this position in this move order which might be good against the bayonet attack anyway quick f5 without knight f6 on this particular occasion usually you have to get the, the knight out of the way and play f5 in the king's engine so seem to have got an exaggerated king's engine style position I'll get the king off this diagonal. I believe that would be a good idea. And let's see, are these pawns going forward? Are they being tempting, tempted forward? Are you free? Bishop on b2 is, is kind of intriguing. It's not eyeing f4. Is that significant? Maybe bring entrench a knight on f4. There's always g3 though. Ah, oh, I'm sealing up the queen side here. I like that. To seal up the queen side. Maybe my knight can pivot back to c5. In fact, that would be nice and positional, surely. Here to sort of blunt the queen side, sort of freeze the queen side from white's, um, you know, pawn breaks and stuff. If there's no pawn breaks, the, the queen side's going to be a lot more stable, solid. And I'm thinking if I get time, he could interfere with bishop a3 though, right now. If he wanted to stop knight d7, he could do that. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that too loudly. <laughs> All right, he hasn't. Okay, I get in knight c5 now. So knight c5 is something I think is pretty desirable. All right, I'm trying to think e4 now as well. In fact, yeah, so knight c5 is nice. This is not much to complain about if I play e4. If I allow rook d1, he's got knight d4, so I'm going to play it immediately, allowing knight h4, trade off decision. Um, I know knight h4 might be a, a nuisance because I really wanted to play knight g6, but I was thinking rook d1. Okay, so I'm getting what I want here. This knight goes to e5. 
don't know if you've seen that recent Magnus Carlsen game against uh, Karyakin. I just covered it this morning. He got a nice knight to e5. In fact, knight e5 here threatens knight d3 check. Uh, he could exchange that off, but I get to double my queen and bishop on this diagonal. There's also the possibility of rook g8, queen g6 supporting e4, hitting g2, and then maybe f4, f3 later. Okay, so uh, my plan I think is fairly clear given this pawn structure. Queen f6, in fact rook a7 to g7, I could even double the rooks here. This looks pretty nifty, very nifty on the dark squares. So queen f6, rook a7 to g7, rook f g8. It all looks pretty fun at the moment, especially if he castles, which doesn't he have to castle at some point? Okay. Uh, just wondering if I could almost win a pawn. Not yet. Okay, d5 is a bit vulnerable. Knight c4 might be a nuisance. Okay, let's put this rook over here. Knight c4 for b6 could be uh, a pain. Yeah. And he's played that. King in the center. Okay, haven't I got rook g2? There must be some downside to this for white. With the king, I've fragmented the pawn, so okay, he's getting a path b pawn. So yeah, it's not that easy, is it? Never that easy. Right, the queens want to come off, do they? Queen g6, is that handy for f4, f3, that sort of thing? Keep the queens on for a moment. I'm thinking with extra time that I've got. Right, knight d3 is threatened. Knight d3 is immediately. Mm, there's rook f2 for knight d3 if I want to win the queen at all costs. Well, this knight d3, queen c8, rook f2 is mate. Bishop d3, rook c3. I've just noticed rook takes f2 is mate. Knight d3 is still good. Uh, say queen c7 check. I think I just take check. Uh, the knight supported by um, the, the pawn anyway. So queen takes rook f2 is checkmate. <clears throat> this looks like a nasty tactic indeed. Knight d3 looks like a pretty nasty tactic as tactics go. I think my king can take a walk over here. Oh, he's still got, yeah, he's still got an issue. Oh, it's still an issue. I can threaten to queen. Don't know if that's quick enough. Hmm, that's that's problematic, isn't it? Oh, it's never over, is it? It's never, it's never so clear cut. Um. Good, I need a move here. D2. There's Queen E4 check there. Oh, I don't want to lose my rook. I'll threaten to Queen, because actually I've got Queen E8 check at least. Have I? If I threaten to Queen, Queen E8 check, Rook takes F2. I think I'm back in the driving seat with this check. I thought this was pretty grim for a moment. I have to give up this pawn for an attack. Is queen, it's all running with check, ideally. Mm, 
was a bit worried there for a moment. Well played. Well played. Yeah, that was a problem to solve <laughs> without losing the rook. Okay. Bot 81. <clears throat> I have investigated this variation with Queen F6. This was a finding when I was actually analysing my repertoire in depth for some uh, one of my the students I'm coaching is uh, I found this Queen F6. It sets a trap. Bishop G5, Knight takes, and this I don't think is that bad. I think Queen F6 is probably one of the better moves. Well, according to uh, in the engines when I prepared this line, uh, but it makes the line kind of more pliable. The tango, if you if you know these kind of weird sidelines it can be a bit more playable then play it with a bit more confidence g5 is a bit wacky uh well it's no need for g5 at the moment f pawn uh, at the moment I c maybe i could just get on with development and then play c6 or knight c3 otherwise knight d5 but maybe you know maybe if king h1 g5 is more uh, justified uh, always f4 is going to break me with f4 surely I think what I need to do. Let's play knight f6, so I have bishop g4 support. I was just thinking, king h1. It'd be nice to play knight g4. Maybe even here, g5. But there's always knight d5. If I shut down knight d5 for uh, for a moment, that seems sensible at the moment. But yes, let's imagine king h1 for f4. Any g5, he still plays f4. He still weakens my f6, my my uh, f file. I don't think there's just cause for g5 on say king h1. Don't think there's uh, justification for that. Actually, wasn't there? Am I a moron? Have I just missed something? Bishop takes h3 for check check and knight g4 isn't that just winning let's just check that again bishop takes h3 g takes check check knight g4 f pawns pinned bishop f4 g5 bishop g3 Now it's queen takes g3. Let's go for this. Let's have a look at that calculation again. G takes check, check, knight g4, bishop f4 protects h2, g5, bishop g3, queen takes g3, bishop h2, queen takes h2. Surely I get my piece back. <coughs> <clears throat> right here we go check check knight g4 ready with g5 Queen takes g3 check. Yeah, thanks again. That was that was an interesting tactic to to spot a second time round rather than castling. Thanks for that. Um, okay, Jan Torrent. opening bottling system coming up um I think B5 here is impossible isn't it E5 I can still make it impossible with e5 again renewed 
b5 e5 hit c6 okay now can I do this it looks like a fairly um, comfortable position for a moment b5 c takes okay okay I, I think if I get this out of the firing line it gives me some more options with moving the bishop and not losing b2 so I guess okay so bishop e3 maybe I'm threatening d4 I could take and then maybe d4 try and contest if b4 knight a4 okay can I try and prove this queen might be a liability on that uh, c file or not d takes and then try and lock down the bishop with e5 now rook d8 after queen e1 if needed I guess He's also got bishop b5 up his sleeve. Can I get away with knight takes c5? d takes knight takes c5. I wonder. d takes knight takes c5. Takes takes rook d8. All right, okay. We've got the situation where. Uh, looks very interesting. B3. I still want to position he shut down this bishop with E5. Maybe like E5 and Queen F2. Right. Can I challenge that knight with rook bd1 or is knight b5 to c3 happening? Let's have a quick look at that. Rook d8, rook d1, knight b5. Well, does bishop take c5 there? Have I got a prospect of playing? Well, I can take that exchange. I think I will get rid of this knight. If he tries to print me that I think there's uh rook there's almost rook d eight check. Queen b six there's rook d eight, queen takes though. Rook a uh queen a seven there's rook d eight though, if takes queen takes a seven. So queen b six, okay, I can't play that now. Can I double rooks? Oh, it's giving me a G file to play with. Can I play Queen G2 taking and then Rook D8? Queen G2 also means Rook G1. In fact, any Queen A2, Rook D8 takes, I take on A2. Well, he could take this Rook as well, though. That's, that's complicated. All right, but here, I, I think I just want to play uh, Queen takes A8 to simplify for Rook D8. Right, there's rook d8 here. This is a liability now, a2. I just take this first with check, more accurate than take the queen, rather than what I mentioned earlier. So the queen's just hanging here. Alright, thanks for the game, Jan Torrent. Okay. Uh, Let's try English opening again. Okay, one elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants. Okay, we've got a game.
and a quick defiver. Some sort of bot filling system or bot filling system. Uh, what's a good plan here? I'll try this one. Target C5 for a moment. The knight is protecting a8. So that means that b6, knight takes, is not an idea, I think, as of taking bishop takes as knight takes a8. Um, instead, what would be a plan? I'm going to go with knight g5 here. Or queen, uh, bishop takes h6. Is that interesting to consider? With some sort of brutal attack in mind. I would be hitting c6, there would be knight g5. Bishop g5, there is an h file to follow up with. And there's also bishop e4 to follow up with. So at the moment, bishop h6 has some benefits. Let's say uh, he played knight d4. Then maybe knight d4, uh, knight d4 and bishop a8 after. Bishop h6, if he's leaving that, I think that's tempting. Okay, he's leaving that. It's tempting just for a laugh. <laughs> I hope this is I hope this is a laugh and not just a disaster. So I got a principal threat of knight g five. I got secondary threats of bishop e four and using the h file with king g two and rook h one. This knight might also switch in, I guess, knight e four. If I wanted to have a knight replacement on g5, I would play knight e4 first. Knight g5 also hits c6, though, immediately as threatens mate. Bishop g5, hg. Does something about that knight. Isn't maybe knight e4 is stronger? Any rook e8, bishop f8, there's knight f6 winning the queen. The queen would have to sacrifice. So let's see, any f5, there isn't queen takes e6. Okay, I'll go with this given he's prompted, uh, kind of prompt, kind of prompted that. If f5, queen takes e6, so I'm hoping I'm threatening knight fg5 here. I hope. Let's say knight d4. It could be a knight to exchange things off. Knight takes d4, c takes, knight g5, bishop takes, hg. I would have the threat of bishop e4. Also, is there an idea of rook c4 to g4 here? All right, I can take a perpetual check. I don't really want to take a perpetual check. But otherwise he plays rook f7. That does stop the whole knight g5 concept. Does it? Kind of. No, it doesn't. There's queen e6. I can play this anyway. There's queen. There's queen takes e6 on fg. I've just noticed. Then I would have um, knight takes g5. I'd be hitting d5 and c6.
it could be dangerous fg queen e6 it looks as though this might actually be on this occasion quite dangerous i've got c6 anyway to pick up i'm going to pick up c6 surely I don't know if HG is stronger, but that piece, it looks worthy to take that piece out because then there's knight takes e5. I'm tempted to take the piece. Oh, he's resigned. Thanks. Thanks. That was a bit unexpected. <laughs> that was, yeah, I was playing for fun a bit. I didn't know it was that dangerous. It did seem to turn out quite dangerous. Okay. Cobra. E4. Why have I played e4 when c4 has been so good? Now I have this weird gambit that I invented by accident. I'll, I'll play it. Should I play it? Should I play it? I wonder. It's a weird gambit. But I have a 100% success record with it. I support d4. Okay. So I'm taking this gambit seriously. This is the third time I've ever played it. And my theory is... It's against what the Korokan player wants. They don't want this diagonal to be a target for white. So, okay, this is a bit of fun as well. I've just made up this gambit. This is, I played it once by accident and beat this IM in a bullet game. Then I thought, hang on, what happened there? And I realized that this diagonal's weakened. So I'm wondering if the gambit, as far as gambits go, uh, has some potential, but he could uh, blunt that diagonal now. However, in this position, I have got the F file to play with. So this is kind of up my street, I believe, so to speak, this kind of gambit. Uh, I can put the bishop on C2 in any way. In any case, I H7 soon. So bishop c2 on bishop d5 let's keep some exciting tension on the board fire on board as Shirov says fire on board so bishop d5 i don't know if he meant tension uh i think he meant complications but bishop d5 bishop c2 okay can i switch this queen in uh let's see no 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 Knight e5, I'm blunted. I feel blunted after knight e5 in certain respects. If he uh, takes and plays knight d5, I don't like that blunted feeling. How about knight h4? Can I just take on g6 and somehow use that h file? There's bishop h5 there. Knight d7, bishop e6 for queen e6, queen d6. I wonder if he'd fall for that. Uh, I think I will play knight e5, actually. Uh, there's something to fall for here. Well, there's knight takes c6 on knight d7. I don't think he'd want to necessarily give up the dark square bishop. Knight d7, knight g6 for bishop e6. No, he's protecting that bishop now. Unless there's something about that. There's also rook e8. There's a pin... Okay, so uh, bishop f4 or bishop g5, maybe bishop g5 and then rook a1. It looks like a nice build up. I like e5 being kind of cemented with a knight here. So rook a e1 and something like queen f2 then, queen h4, is afforded by the overprotection of e5. Rook a e1 overprotects, which frees up some pieces to move. So queen f2 to h4 after. This looks exciting. Rook a e1, queen f2 to h4. It looks fairly exciting. I just don't like the Kara Khan. So, okay, I've invented something, but it's. I have some other inventions uh, for bullet chess, which seem to work out okay at the moment. Um, Knight takes. Okay, so knight takes g6. Is that any good? I don't like that bishop. I can I can I can celebrate this diagonal with bishop c2. Now f7, these look like targets. Queen f2 to h4. They look like targets. Yeah, queen h4. 
it looks like the king side's under some scrutiny here. I like having a trump card without a counterpart. This this bishop without the counterpart means I should be able to celebrate the light squares more easily now. Queen h4. Okay, this is brewing up to be dangerous, surely. This is brewing up now nicely to be dangerous. Rook f3 to h3, queen h8. There wouldn't be any time to use f4 there because that's immediately threatening checkmate. I think he's in a bind. How does he get out of this given there's rook f3 to h3? That's my ideal dream resource. If I had one, two, three moves, it would be checkmate. That's the, the rook left to use here. Rook f3 to h3, queen h8. Okay, let's imagine an escape plan. King f8. It's probably going to be on the board soon. King f8. Well, there's rook f7 here to win the queen, and there's bishop g6, which kind of wins material after, in any case, undermining that pawn chain. All right, there's bishop g6 here. It looks uh, terrible for black because uh, takes bishop f7. All right, thanks for the game, Cobra. Yeah, I'll try this um, gambit a bit more, I think. This Karakhan gambit. If anyone wants to try and play the Karakhan, which is thought to be a solid opening, I think mean, I've got a new treat against it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Smith Mora gambit against the Sicilian, of course. Uh, okay. So Esmond's uh, got this book, Smith Mora, Mayhem and Mora. Which I, I didn't fully read, but from what I did read, it's, it is quite exciting. He wants to create mayhem in all the variations. How you know how to create mayhem trouble, trouble in all the variations he covers is the, the sort of philosophy, uh, which is really interesting. I think for a book, a uh, gambit book, it's in the spirit of the uh, gambiters, uh, basically. Um, but here, yeah, this is a Moroxy bind position, which I don't mind either, really. Uh, let's see, can I get rid of this defensive bishop and then play knight g3 uh, for, for something like knight f5 at the right moment? Knight d5 might extend the scope of my bishop on b1 to glare down the king side. Okay, it looks as though almost as if there's something up. Now, unfortunately, there's always a knight g4. I want to extinguish this knight g4 concept or tactic or move, whatever you call it. I want to be able to play f4 without knight g4. And then maybe uh, e5 takes, takes knight e5. Surely something's up there. I can't see it though. Rook f6, ef, rook f6, bishop f6. Um, and as an alternative to e5, what about d takes f5, fg, bishop g6, queen g5. This might be a punt. f4, knight d7, e5, d takes f5 with the idea fg, fg, queen g5. Let's imagine king h7. It looks fairly dangerous. It looks kind of that's an, a waiting move. Can I build up on that? Do I need to do something now? F four. Let's have a look at this again. Knight d seven. E five. D takes f five. Does liberate the bishop. Ah, oh, since I'm looking at it, I'm going to play it. It seems to have a, a, a sort of thematic feel to it, to liberate the bishop, if nothing else. Hmm. 
e4 hits the knight I'm trying to liberate this bishop or queen g5 maybe queen g5 is better because uh, maybe I'm unveiling some defensive resource if I take immediately if I keep it in hand then fg bishop g6 looks crushing on the other hand let's see queen g5 has he got anything Knight d5, fg, and bishop g6 looks crushing. Bishop d5, even there's rook d5 and fg, and bishop g6 looks crushing. If I played fg, it does give him defensive resource, resource king h7. So because of that evidence, I'm going to play this, not fg. I don't want to introduce king h7. I keep telling some of the people I'm, I'm coaching at the moment not to give the opponent defensive resources on a plate. And I'd just be giving it on a plate this king h7. So rook d5, fg, fg, bishop g6. It looks crushing. Is there any refutation there? No, I don't think so. This pawn chain is about to be challenged. I like the dynamics of the bishop and, and the rook here. Fg and bishop g6. He's not automatically recapturing. For some reason. I don't know if there'll be another option. Okay, I think I'll just take that then. I think it's too strong. G takes is too strong. All right, thanks for the game, Friedel. Yeah, some fun games today. Okay, uh, tell us. Okay, tell us. Uh, no, let's stop pre move. Stop pre moving. Stop pre moving. <laughs> okay. D takes, there's um, Knight G4. I've seen this trick before. There was this guy called Hasman that used to play for Bonnet Chess Club. Uh, went back to Cyprus, uh, but he had this great, yeah, he showed this nifty trick in the King's Engine, which I think is just committed to memory. Okay, so this is a liability, the B2 Bishop. It's unprotected. And when I say tactical liability I found this great uh, YouTube series recently uh, by this IM which reflects what this this FM has in this book on tactical signals and something which because uh, I'm a fan of alignment I didn't realize something about tactical signals uh, that was documented in this book which I should maybe get but he reckons uh, not just loose pieces uh, are sort of on the radar for the tactician but alignment in general I, I didn't really think of that it's this this set of videos which are free but they reflect this book you can get by this FM so he lists these seven signals uh, tactical signals so one of them I, I agree with most of them but I, it took me back to see alignment in there uh, I'm, you know, I'm a, a general fan of alignment uh, but yeah loose pieces king safety I think he talks about the knight distance but alignment's one of the seven it's quite interesting uh, how you can sort of get this feel for when tactics should uh, exist when when to look for a stronger move uh, you know that that saying you know when you see a strong move look for an even strong one but especially uh, when there's these sig so-called signals of the position uh, to look out for I mean the classic which has been uh, mentioned a lot by by various uh, people 
on YouTube, if nothing else. Loose Pieces is the classic as a tactical liability to look out for. Um, not not just in the initial, in any position you're calculating, even a few moves down to look out for loose pieces. But yeah, alignment is a more subtle one if things are aligned. And I I was actually looking at some problems, uh, puzzles recently with someone. And in fact, even alignment to escape squares, even if your bishop was just covering some escape squares of the opponent's king, it's almost, it is kind of an invisible uh, signal that something um, might might be up uh, for solving some it's useful for some puzzles to solve uh, just alignment in general not not just directly to the opponent's king or sensitive pieces but maybe even uh, to escape squares you know more subtly uh, because I think we have very limited calculation uh, potential so any anything which helps uh, get a, a better fill I wonder if my bishop should be on this diagonal uh, for these tactical signals, anything which improves the the, the uh, tactical fill, but I definitely know that you know the concept of um, loose pieces has been very well received. I mean, there's quotations like loose pieces tend to dr drop off uh, and stuff as well. Um, okay, so rook e7. I'm still holding that file at the moment, so I might be threatening queen e1 and rook h1 later if I took that file. I'll be frantic then queen e1 but there's bishop f1 uh, otherwise king h2 rook h1 okay so um, let's see if he tries to contest this file does that work he's setting up for my queen h1 because I'm wondering fg queen g6 okay it threatens mate rookie a queen h7 king f8 that might be a draw by perpetual check queen f5 queen f6 there's knight h7 but bishop f6 I'm not sh I'm not sure I'm not sure that's mating so I'd be threatening queen e1 and if king h2 queen f2 if rook e1 rook e1 rook h1 if queen h7 let's have a look at this again king f8 okay there's not too many moves here so i can't play queen f6 because of knight h7 but what about bishop f6 on queen f5 bishop f6 knight h7 so that knight h7 i assume i can rule that out yeah so bishop f6 we're left with bishop f6 knight h7 king g7 still threatening queen e1 no I'm not king h2 okay this move queen h5 for sure queen e1 not here queen e1 because king h2 there's no queen h1 because the rook's holding h1 the rook the queen's holding f2 so unless there's something I'm missing there I think queen takes f6 is needed just check this again I can I can't take there the Queen's holding there so I'll simply take her I think um it got me thinking anyway this week about these uh tactical signals as well hold on from for a moment hold on the rooks Queen g6 Queen g6 there's no Queen e5 so that's a double attack without queen e5 that surely gets the queens off well the, the rooks hanging All right, thanks. Okay. Um, right, on to the next. Okay, Mick Tell. Did I did I miss something? Did I miss something? So anyway, it bugged me this week. Why did I miss alignment? It got me thinking. How on earth? 
do I miss alignment as a tactical liability? I was thinking, what what has this guy what has this guy done? Uh, because uh, you you can you can abstract from uh, things, yeah, like uh, back row mate. You can say, okay, back row mate is a celebration of lack of escape squares. So you, actually, in any situation in general, if there's a lack of escape squares, you can look for checkmates. So the back row mate mate is a glorious example because statistically, pawns are on the second rank. So there's a natural lack of escape squares because often pawns are hemming in the king. The the idea of making air for the king. Uh, so you can sometimes abstract from existing uh, tactical ideas. But I was wondering how this guy, this FM, uh, abstracted out alignment. I'm thinking that's that's really quite interesting. He's taken every single detail of maybe and sort of stepped out to say what are the components. Is Mick Tal around? He's he's just typed. Hi, is is he around? Do I need to do the ten second count? Um, okay, unfortunately, we need to do the 10 second count here. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, six elephants, seven elephants. Ah, okay, cool. We got a game. Um, yeah, no, it was it was just it was just annoying. I don't know how I could I could miss that idea. Uh, so I was wondering how how could he deconstruct that concept from existing, uh, you know, say puzzles. How I guess if you if you look at in great detail at what you take for granted, uh, then you you can use that in other stuff. It's it's kind of what is taken for granted that there's alignment in a lot of uh, tactical situations. But it is the one that that stuck, out, you know, stood out out of the seven. Why, why, why that wouldn't have occurred to me? And it is kind of potentially useful. So I did start noticing its use when solving some tactical puzzles after, or at least help, helping to explain some tactical puzzles. Um, but for me, I think he missed out a major one, which is lack of escapes, because I don't think he went to town on that. And that's like I feel one of the major ones. Because as soon as soon as there's any lack of escape squares, for, it's quite often you're you're chatmating the opponent, uh, especially in chess puzzles. Uh, so here the the bishop. Okay, so queen h4 g3. Well, can I just sack that queen h2 king king there? Queen queen h4 g3 queen h3 bishop g4. And my queen would be trapped. My queen would be trapped. That's pretty technical detail there. If I just went in for knight takes g3 instead, bishop g3, queen g3, king h1, bishop h3, uh, defensive resources there, rook g1. I think there's enough. There's, there's no. I need more attacking pieces. Surely, after Queen H4 G3, surely I need more attacking pieces. Is that really the case? Bishop H3, Rook G1, Queen H4. You know, I'm not even sure here. I could be in big trouble here if I lose two pieces without concrete. Follow up. Queen h4, g3, knight g3, hg, bishop g3, hg, queen g3, king h1. So what is what is bishop h3, rook g1, queen h4, threatens bishop f1. But he has various moves there, surely, in that position. Let's say rook g2 as an example. Rook G two, Bishop G two, King G two, Rook eight F eight. Do do I need to get into this? Do I need to get into this? Why not, okay, why not just play H five for Queen H four, Queen H three, and Knight H four? I think I'll do this. This is much simpler. Just to extinguish Bishop G four as a resource. Queen H four, G three, Queen H three. Park there. 
Bishop f1, knight h4 threatens mate, and he's got bishop f1, it stops is the knight f3. If he took there's queen h4. So I wanna I wanna play okay, bishop d4, queen h4. Surely here, bishop d4, queen h4. And this is anything stronger, there isn't knight g3 immediately, hg. But queen h4 threatens okay, bishop e1. He's got bishop e1, queen can go back to f6. Bishop e1, queen f6. I've lost a lot of time on the clock there. Need to regain some time on the clock. So bishop e1, queen f6, there's knight e4. Is that necessarily good to go to f6? Maybe it's a g7. If I go to g7, I've got another idea. Hang on. Bishop d7, queen g7, h4 for knight g3, and then using the h file. Give my bishop a parking spot. So bishop d7, bishop a7. All right, can I play bishop d7 here? Connect the rook. What's that? What's that? I just take that. What is that? What is that? I could have taken with the knight as well, but pieces is a piece. I mean, knight, yeah, was probably stronger, but this is just a blunder, isn't it? All right, thanks for the game, Mick. That was uh, that was interesting. I have to try and analyze these one day. Uh, all right, uh, act, act if Springer or something. Maybe e4. Okay. I'm not just saying this. This genuinely conceptually annoyed me that this FM has this book and he mentions alignment. I never even thought of it. It's something I never thought of. I like to abstract my tactics. This guy, I don't know. I don't know. It's annoying. <clears throat> uh, okay, but he didn't have escape squares. Uh, highlighted that much. He just, I think, broad king safety is a bit too broad brush. Okay, so knight e4, rook e4. Bishop d3. Or do I just try and take this pawn back? I'm going to a self pin here. And I'm pawn down. There's also bishop f4. There's also bishop g5. Bishop g5, f5, rook h4. Is this, this is a bit of a hack attack, isn't it? Is it worth it? He's got f6. I don't know if I should have just got my pawn back without further ado. Uh, he's got things like f6. Uh, don't tell me. Okay, hang on a sec. F6, bishop h4, e5. Mind you, that does. No, that, that's impossible. That's pinned. Okay. Can't I just take and get my pawn back here? Is that so bad? He's still got a c8 issue. I'm, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do this. He's tempting me to do this. That's rook d8. Queen g4. f5. Queen f5. f5. Okay. c3. What about simply c3 for a moment? Now e5. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to exploit the pin maybe with e5. Queen e2 should be sufficient to unpin. This is just unpinning c3 for queen e2. It's unpinning. What I'm doing is trying to unpin here. All right, can I have a small edge with this instead of the isolated pawn? Cd. 
I don't like the look of the isolated pawn. Rook d4, rook d4, queen d4, bishop d7, rook d1. I've got d file possession. So there's no rook d8 for a moment. I've got a 3 to 2 pawn majority. 3 to 2 pawn majority. I think there's also bishop d3 because if rook d8, there's bishop h7. If I want bishop d3, there is bishop d3. Can I use this pawn majority? A blunt bishop with f3. It gives the king some air. There's some dark square weaknesses as well there. What do I want to be doing here? B3, A4 for A5. Maybe I think this looks thematic. No, that looks to be losing a pawn. How about B4 then? B4. Somehow I want to start moving these pawns, I think. It is a 3 to 2 pawn majority. Maybe bishop drops back, protects the king. C4, B5. Push the bishop back to e8. All right, there's still no rook d8. My pawn majority is starting to make way. Except he is going to target a3. Is there a way of doing this with a pivot rook d3, rook g3 move? That might create some extra weaknesses and protect a3. The threat of uh, rook g3 might create some weaknesses. There's e5, maybe queen d6. So rook g3 trying to probe some weaknesses might be better than b5. Rook g3, f6. B5, CB, CB, bishop moves back, bishop C4. There's also E5. Can I play this trick for rook G3? Well, I still got E5. That hits the queen. All right, let's see. Um, create some weaknesses. Or not. Or have I just lost possession of the file? Maybe I've just lost possession of the file. This might not have been a clever thing to do. Okay, there's the pawn majority to try and play with. If I get bishop c4 in, maybe that's a useful perk of doing this. Bishop d7, queen g6. Queen queen f7, there's bishop c4 if it takes... Oh no, there isn't. Bishop's protecting over there. I can threaten queen takes h6 though. And now there's also bishop c4 check as well, but queen h6. There's still the two to one pawn majority. The first things first, he has to address this. Two to one pawn majority or bishop d3. Hang on, what's wrong with bishop d3? e4 is not much. A5, A6, am I? That would be nice, surely. Okay, my, my king hasn't got too much air. He could pin soon. Unfortunately, I've let him pin, haven't I? I can't let him pin like that. Oh, it's, it's too late. <laughs> I've let him pin. Oh, Muppets. Okay. And he's going to have bishop b5 immediately after. I actually can't do anything about that. Pin. What have I done? Okay, I have to protect over here. Against bishop b5. Oh, 
I should have maybe played h3 a lot earlier. Okay, queen e5. Can I? Okay, at least do g h3. Getting tied up here. G3. H3. Ah, G3 doesn't seem to do much. Rook C1, and then Bishop B5. Okay, King G2 here. Trying to address Bishop B5. He's got E8 protected with the Queen as well. There's no Rook B5 for Queen E8 with the Queen on E5. Have I got A6 at all coming up? And there's also, also he's got stuff coming up. Blockade. I. Uh, I'm getting mated over there. Oh, that was clever. Hmm. No, I've run out of time and everything. Yeah, tragic. I had control of the position. I blew it. I thought I had reasonable control of the position. Well played. Ah, uh, yeah, I I lost control of the position there, quite spectacularly. The uh, back row and the pin was too much, I think. <clears throat> can I take that? Is that a pawn I can take? Was that a little mistake there? I don't know. That looks like a center pawn. C6 for D5. Or not. How about Queen B6? Or let him take, because there's check and then Queen C5. Isn't that winning material? Check and Queen C5. That's a kind of tactic which reminds me of something from way back. He doesn't have to take that though. Okay. Um, C5 here. Oh, don't know. Castle and D five. Can do this. There's a certain amount of pressure on the position. D6. Can I play D6? Can I? Or not? Uh, I might need to unpin here. Hold on. If F5, F6 is useful then. F6 in any case might be handy for D5. So, yeah. This looks as though it could have potential. E takes, knight takes for knight e3. E takes, knight takes for knight e3. That looks as though it's got potential. Thank <laughs> you. 
Aha. Can I, okay, can I pin that knight for a moment? Is that useful? Friends, the knight takes f4. Again, I could be threatening knight takes f4 because it's hitting that bishop. Knight takes, sorry, bishop takes, knight takes. So knight takes f4 again. Loose bishop on c4. That looks to be a threat. Knight takes f4. Let's just check this again. Knight takes, bishop takes. If bishop takes, knight takes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll move this. There's an idea a6, b5 for c4. a6, b5 for c4. Is that on the cards? I think I'd like to keep my um, give give the pawn to keep d5. But on the other hand, a pawn is a pawn sometimes. What what is wrong with d takes and then knight b4? Is there anything particularly wrong with after knight takes c3, knight b4? That is a pawn. Ah, go for the pawn for a moment. Let's see, is there a uh, bishop c4, potential bishop c4? Sorry, but I'm just streaming. Bishop c4. Let's see. Uh, okay, okay. I'll just take it here. All right, okay. It's got a bit tactical. Whoops. Can I do this? It's got a bit, unfortunately, tactical. Didn't see any of this. Um, just lost the exchange. I just lost the exchange. It's uh, unfortunate. Can I win another a pawn? B four, bishop a two, though, uh, or not? Bishop c four. I think there's a certain amount of compensation there with the clock of ages, especially. B3, maybe bishop g8. I can hold that with f5. If the rook moves, sometimes. I think there's going to be knight e2 sometimes. So can I. Okay, my king needs some air as well, I think. I thought there's knight e2 here. Oh no, the knight's protecting d1. Alright, so that knight's been shown to be a bit of a liability now. Knight e2, hang on. Rook e2, rook takes, and then bishop e2. You know, so that, that works, I think. Well, it works as in... It might be okay. So knight takes rook takes d1, rook takes rook takes d1, bishop takes e2. And the clock advantage is too much. Okay, so try and move these pawns. Fix that as a target. Bring this guy up or bring the king up. Bring the king up. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's too much, too much pressure on the clock there to handle that position. Okay, uh, Jose Bon. Hmm. This Vienna game. So, am I threatening F takes and then Bishop takes for Knight takes? This might be on the cards F takes, Bishop takes, Knight takes. So knight takes g4 after. Or not. As the case is here. Yeah. There is knight d5 check. If knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Threatening maybe d4 and bishop g5 check. So again, if king takes, then knight takes. And knight takes g4 looks dangerous. I, I, okay, I, I think, yeah, knight d5. Bishop takes. d4, threatening bishop g5. Bishop b4, c3, oh, queen a5 might be more to the point. c3, cd, d takes. Well, I think there's there's a lot of the kings in the center. Um, bishop, queen a5 might be interesting uh, here with tempo. c3, cd, d takes. Okay, we're going in for that. Right, there is bishop g5 check here. I'm hoping there's going to be a key check here. d5 or d6, or king e8. Uh, the queen protects d8. Maybe queen, king e8, okay. Might need to work something out here. There's queen d6 at minimum, threatening queen e7, mate. So king e8, queen d6. Queen d6 here looks crushing. It's with tempo. King f5, queen e5, king f7, knight e5. No, I think the king's too unsafe here. Thanks for the game, Jose. Ah, uh, the commutator. Okay, the commutator. <clears throat> He's tempting me to play f5. I wonder if I should just be sensible and not play f5. So this is more solid. And I could play super solid without the h5 attack uh, by playing bishop g4. But on the other hand, h5 is really tempting and a lot of fun usually. Uh, I'm trying to resist it here, bishop f5. If I just resist that for a moment. <laughs> uh, 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 I can't, uh, I don't think I can. <laughs> uh, mm, okay, here we go.
h3 h2 looks pretty tempting h3 it's form pawn time anyway there is d takes for knight d4 if i want another pawn do i want another pawn he's not really going to give me his lights my bishop is he is he knight d4 another pawn Queen d3 or f3. There's bishop d4. If f3, bishop e5 check. If bishop f4, there's queen f6. Oh, there's f takes protecting. Okay, let's check that out again. Bishop takes d4, f3, bishop e5, bishop f4. What about just simply moving the bishop back? I've got some pawns back there. Oh, hang on. He had bishop takes c6 check. Oh, Muppets. He had bishop takes c6. No, I'm, I'm miscalculating. I'm miscalculating. Danger. Danger. Miscalculated. Oh, bishop takes c6. I was just losing a, I was just losing a piece. Another piece. Uh, queen f6 here. There's knight d5 here. Okay, this is this is not good. There's knight d5 now hitting f6 and c7. Or is there? No, there isn't. Yes, there is. There is. It protects f4 as well. <laughs> knight d5 was protecting f4 as well. It was doing quite a lot. Okay, knight takes e5 in this position. Or queen takes e5. Knight takes... Maybe... Right, there is bishop f3 here, surely. Bishop f3 for that juicy check. King comes out. There's things like rook h4, queen takes eight, f3. Oh, this, do I need to check that out in detail? Probably not. I think there's knight d2 there. Well, what? Looking at bishop f3 here, bishop f3, knight f3, king g3, there's knight d2. At minimum, surely. So bishop f3, here goes, bishop f3. Why wouldn't there be rook h4 after bishop takes here? Rook h4 is also... Ah. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. But that loses yet another pawn, another pawn over here. I think I'm going for it. Mind you, there's bishop b7. Let's just castle here then. Okay. There's rook h4. Okay, no, there's bishop f5. There's knight g4 is potentially interesting. I can just kick that. The knight's protecting f7. Was he going to play f4 now? Uh, so I am winning another pawn. Will there be knight g4 to e3 on f4? At, for example, knight g4 check, e3. I'm taking another pawn. Knight's still pretty good. There's also knight d2 now, but there's check. Does it matter? King c7. There'll be check on f3 back to e5 to safety, surely.
further there's rook dg8 for rook g2 and knight f3 potentially rook g1 there's knight f3 i think this knight f3 is looking cool all right i'm threatening mate with knight f3 here huh? cutting some escape squares immediately threatening mate Knight f3 is checkmate, isn't it? All right, thanks for the game. Come to it. Yeah, that was usual. Uh, uh, okay, thanks. Uh, usual fun uh, with the H pawn. Uh, okay, so um, fun, fun for me anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. If I take and then d5 isn't this I think this is might be a simple way of approaching this uh, just to fix the bishop the bishop is an unprotected piece uh, whilst at it c3 would further block that bishop interrupt the bishop I'm uh, just dropping back to d6 so I think I'm comfortable here I've just hemmed in the bishop the bishop is an unprotected piece my control of e4 looks nice in fact if I plunge into e4 straight off the bat for f5 later I think this could be a nice attacking position. C4. Okay, there is there is the idea. At C4. Maybe I castle CD might be four. Right, ninety-seven is C5. Oh, there's Bishop F4. That does seem plausible. Actually, in this particular position, because the bishop's there, not on this diagonal. So c5, bishop f4, cd knight d5. A default kind of plan would be rook f6 to h6. Let's imagine knight c3, c6, bishop c4. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that a problem? If I take and I could play Bishop F four or Knight F four. Bishop F four gaining a tempo, then rook f six. I don't like losing my knight on e four, but queen e eight, rook e one, the knight's not stable. Knight g five though, hold on. Knight g five Ah, uh, don't know. I'll I'll take like this. Bishop f four for rook f six. So queen takes it. I play bishop f four, just to stop this queen g five resource because I want to play rook f six, but no, it's queen g five. So sort of play rook f six without queen g five. Uh, okay, can I kick the queen here or not? There is queen d5 for bishop c4. Okay, I can keep uh, the structure. Oh, I thought the idea was bishop c4. I was going to play bishop e7. <laughs> bishop c4. I, okay, maybe, maybe. I thought it was like uh, an interesting temporary queen exchange. Bishop c4, bishop e7. <laughs> it was in my hands. It's, I don't know, maybe. I don't want to take you here because it's like you, it gives like. The pawns get together. Okay, anyway, thanks for the game. Thanks for the game. Uh, okay. <laughs> 
so tango here can I as I'm going to do some structural damage Bishop b4 takes on the other hand you know maybe it was an idea to actually have played bishop takes c3 there oh well this looks very tempting for g5 and knight e4 just forcing moves for a moment for queen f6 and if uh, bishop d3 say bishop d3 queen f6 bishop e4 uh, there's rook e4 isn't there queen e4 bishop c3 and if takes takes I'm winning this or not well this looks as though it should be okay for winning a pawn winning a pawn or something better I think it's a nice blockade position I'll just go with a nice blockade position or is it Bishop f5 is Bishop d3 now Bishop g6 all right hang on there's Knight g6 as well Bishop d3 Knight g6 uh, Knight g3 Queen's hanging, I'm afraid. Sport masterpiece there. Okay. Wait. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the game. Game It was it was a good position, I mean it was sport position with that. I can't accept from a non premium member. Uh Mike Goring. This could be the last game. There's only three minutes to go. This could be the last game. King's Gamut. Go down in flames with the King's Gamut. It's an idea, I believe. It's been seen before. It's it's there's a name to this. Um it's got a name. Uh try and play without messing this up too much from what I do have on position, which is a nice center and a nice F file. Those are the two things. Bishop C four and castling would seem reasonable. Bishop C four and castle. Okay, can I play G three? Or is Bishop G three better? There's always Queen G four. Okay. I'll do this. All right, so Bishop C four here looks reasonable. Although I'm wondering now, Bishop D three, if that was better. Maybe I, I should have considered Bishop D three more. <clears throat> if I mobilize like Paul Morphy, Knight BD2, Rook AE1, all my pieces mobilized, surely it's going to lead to something. 
<clears throat> if that bishop g5 might have been something already. Queen takes, queen takes f7 is crushing. King d8, queen takes f8. I missed my chance to play bishop g5 now. Oh well. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Ah, uh, my pets. Okay. Still, f7 is on the screw today here. If he took f7, I think, is under great pressure. Oh, is, there, is there anything here? If I play rook f2 for a moment. Now f7 is attacked again. It could castle queenside. Would I have enough pawns if I just played queen takes f7 to handle that position? I got central pawns. All right, e5 here looks potentially useful. Uh, bishop b5 might be more to the point actually if to dissuade castling queen side. I'm fretting also maybe d5 sometimes. That does seem a bit of a contortion, knight h6. Right. Knight f3 to g5. What about this? I'm not convinced now about bishop takes c6. Knight g4, I would have. Okay, what about e5 here? Is there rook g4? I, think I'll, I will play that. If I played, if I play, uh, if I double rocks for a moment, there is there is the forcing move rook g four. Uh, that's annoying, isn't it? Rook g four. <sighs> All right. If I take. With the knight, am I? Have I got anything, or not? Maybe I'm threatening d5 on rook g4 here. Uh, right, I didn't see that one. Okay, rook here. A loose piece. I need d5, there's queen c5. What about bishop d3 to f5? Mm. That's a pawn for a piece. I shouldn't really. I guess I shouldn't really exchange off pieces here, but the pawns look quite good. Um, I probably should keep the queens on. Um, but my king's getting attacked. I don't like my king getting attacked. Okay, I'll just go with this, which is probably terrible. Uh, in fact, G3, my king is getting attacked. Yeah, so much for this king's game. The way I played it. Don't know why I felt I had something with the pawns here. That's a bit silly. H H four looks as though Black's got the attack as well. Yeah. 
Um, I could wait for h4 for h3 maybe and then g4 I don't know if I should be doing something else there what, what about okay what about c4 to stop bishop d5 uh, bishop e4 it's only a pawn for a piece <laughs> it's not good a pawn for a piece with the queens off but it's the time it's the time isn't it it's the time 25 seconds now uh for a blitz game i think the king's game is more acceptable if something really goes wrong there's time pressure uh, it's blundering a piece back here All right, I think the King's Gambit is okay for Blitz. It doesn't really matter if it's a disaster. It's only Blitz. So, uh, okay, thanks. Um, all right, have a nice rest of the day, and um, see you next week. Thanks very much. Hope you found that entertaining. One fun, ten boring. Uh, you might want to vote. Okay, thanks very much.